Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take a look at the Breville Barista Express Impress. Am I impressed? We'll find out. Now before we jump into this video, I want to do a couple of housekeeping things. So first of all, I'm splitting this review kind of into two segments. The first bit is just gonna be a general overview of the machine and my thoughts for like beginner usage. And then the second part of this review, I will be going into kind of like if you're an advanced type of person that wants to optimize everything, or if you're a beginner that wants to buy this machine and wants to know, is it something you can grow into? Is there Are there features on here that you can kind of learn as time goes on or that you can optimize for a bit more control in your uh, daily coffee routine. I've only made one review so far on Breville products since I have started doing a consulting thing for them on an undisclosed secret project. This is completely separate from any type of sales, any performance of any Breville machine. This could tank, the Bambinos could tank, the dual boilers could tank, the whole line could tank. It doesn't affect me at all. Part of our agreement is I can review whatever I want, I can say whatever I want, there's no barring, It's what's done is done. And lastly, I would ask that you'll take a moment and like uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, check out my Patreon. All this good, good stuff really helps the channel. If you've seen my stuff before, if this is your first time, welcome. We go deep here. We go hard on coffee stuff. So this is one of the newest additions to the Breville lineup. Breville is known for making a lot of introductory style kitchen appliance type machines. So this is the new and improved Breville Breeze Express. If you have no experience, you need a little assistance, but you don't want to jump straight to something like a Jura or a fully automatic style machine. You still want a little bit of control to kind of learn. This is kind of what they're targeting here. We're not going to go over their whole line today. We're going to kind of focus in on just this machine and its singular performance and who it might be for. So on this machine, you have the typical 250 gram hopper. You have a two liter water tank in the back, just like on the original Breville Express. You also have the water filtration system that comes with it, which I highly recommend using. That's the number one way to keep your machine chugging along in perpetuity is to make sure that your water is good going into the machine. Now, I'm not going to go deep into water chemistry here, but just know you want lower PPM than than a lot of this, uh, than a lot of your tap waters. So using tap, if you are, make sure you're keeping up with your filter inside the machine itself and do not use distilled water. So don't use distilled, don't use crazy hard water. Try to find something in the middle that's not going to leave a ton of calcium deposits throughout your machine. This this overall draws around, uh, it's like 15 or 1800 watts of power. Uh, the, the inside, the heating mechanism in this is the same as it was in the Express, the original one. So you have a thermal coil in here. So not the new Thermajet technology that Breville has come out with that is, you know, on the Barista Pro, it's on the Bambino and the Bambino Plus. That is a very efficient, incredibly quick heating system where it's ready in about three seconds. The thermal coil is a, not data technology, the thermal block would be the most most dated. Thermocoil is kind of an evolution of the thermal block. You have water going through the heated system, the heated unit, and it has coils going around as the name would suggest, but it's not the thin membrane system like the Thermajet has. So it takes a little longer to heat up, but it still does a really fine job. You're able to prolong your pre-infusion phase, which the Thermajet does not allow. You have the same steam power, which uh, I know is a letdown for a lot of people. To me, it's six and a half, one does the other. You have a little bit longer time steaming, but it gives beginners a little bit more time in order to figure out what's going on so that they can optimize their milk texture. You have over here the biggest change from the original to this machine. So this is a really nifty feature that I think is hit or miss for people. It is a manually assisted tamper. As you go down, you can see inside the tamper flip down into place and then it pushes and at the bottom it does a slight twist. You can kind of see right here. It's emulating kind of that polishing technique some baristas employ. Granted, I teach against that because usually when people do that polishing, they go a little askew on the angle and it can cause channeling. But this one being, you know, a machine, it's not going side to side whenever it's, uh, it twists. So it just gives you that nice little polish at the end, or that's the intention of it. What's cool about this is not only do you not have to worry about, you know, getting tamping form right, so you don't get over time, you know, some of that barista arthritis, but 
you get consistent pressure every time. You're never gonna under tamp or over tamp as long as you are falling through with this, which is 10 kilograms of pressure or 22 pounds of pressure. Now, on top of that, what's really cool is it has a smart system in here. Volumetrically, it tells you where you're at in the basket, which we're gonna use here in a second, which I think is an incredible tool. So based off of their stock double or single basket, which they have the option to filter to toggle between right here, I recommend always using the double shot basket. It's a little bit more forgiving and I think you're gonna optimize your espresso in that way. With those, whatever you tell it, it knows the depth, all right? So based off of your portafilter sitting in this fork, it will know how deep the tamp needs to go or how high it needs to go in order for the right volume. And so what happens is as you're pushing down, once it hits full compression of the puck, it'll tell you if you have too little coffee in the basket or too much coffee in the basket, which is a great way to kind of diagnose what's going on in your puck. There is an ideal volume for every basket, and this, this doesn't really change. Of course, with, with more prosumer style machines, what people will do is they might put a puck screen on top, something like this, to lessen the to lessen the head space between the top of the puck and the bottom of the shower screen, which can help increase your body. A lot of people aren't wanting to faff around with that, so getting the right volume in your basket is an incredibly important thing to kind of mess with. And so this does that automatically for you. Of course, you don't have to use that feature. Now with manual mode, of course, you are doing more or less coffee in the basket, which gives you a little bit more control over what's going on. Now on the side, you have 25 different options for grind size, so just one to 25. And so obviously one being the finest, 25 being the coarsest. And of course, just like any Breville machine, you can take the hopper off and change the inner cone so that, it, so that one is finer or coarser and 25 is finer or coarser, depending on the direction you twist the cone inside the grinder itself. Itself. So you have that little bit of extra. So if you only ever do espresso on this and you do lighter coffees, you can go and you can turn it to even finer adjustment. If you do, you know, pour overs and stuff using this grinder, you can put it to the coarser adjustment. Um, so you'll lose a little bit on one side or the other, but it does broaden your range a bit um, and pretty easy to do. You still have the hot water, which is a very funny looking stream that comes out, but it does what it does. Just like so. Little messy as little bits kind of fly around, but it gets the job done if you're wanting an Americano or you're gonna bypass your espresso with some water. Then of course we have the steam wand, which looks kind of like this. And just like with the other uh, thermocoil uh, machines that take longer to heat up, you turn it on and it takes a little bit to purge out the water. It's kind of talking to us. It's gonna tell us when it's ready because it's switching the heating mechanism over to the steam wand so it has to heat up higher and then it's almost at full pressure. Then what I like to do is right when it's at full pressure, I stop and then I restart once my pitcher is in there. You have two programmable buttons and the, the way you program it is hold them both down at the same time. Then what'll happen is they'll both flash. Boom. And then you, whichever one you want to program, start the shot. When you want it stopped, stop it. And it's saved that volume of water coming out. Supposedly, the water coming out of your machine should be at 93 degrees Celsius, which is kind of a nice temperature in order to extract. We'll test that in the latter half of this video. On paper, for the price, it packs a massive punch. Granted, a lot of people are going to want to use a scale in order to optimize their experience with this machine. The fact though is, is once you use, if you're using this grinder, when you grind it, you're not able to pull the portafilter out because the clearance is so low right here that all those grounds that have built up ready to be tamped are just gonna fall all over the place. And so it doesn't really give you the option to distribute and tamp on your own or to distribute then replace it and tamp it. It also doesn't really give you the option to pull it out way and then put it back in if you need more or less. So you're truly going off volumetric. So this machine is absolutely geared at people interested in coffee. They want to start, they don't wanna 
start with a super automatic. They want a little bit more quality. They want a little bit more control over their process. And so this is aimed at those types of beginners who you know, are not baristas, they don't have any formal training, and they want something to kind of get their feet wet in the coffee world. We are going to get a little bit deeper, and the only reason we can get deeper, and the only reason that we can make this at all is because of the phenomenal sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. I personally absolutely, truly love Squarespace. I don't know jack squat about coding and internet stuff. I'm very stupid when it comes to it. If it doesn't have an app that just tells me exactly what to do, I don't use it when it comes to digital stuff. You can organize the links to your social media so people can kind of see your exploding TikTok or whatever it might be. On top of all that, a blog function there, which I've been planning on using on my own. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to, I promise. It's an incredible thing for people who are looking to really optimize their online presence. You can use my link, which is below www.squarespace.com slash Lance Hedrick. Respect the name, love the name, I'm bada bing bada boom. It's free to go ahead and kind of like build something. And when you're ready to launch it, click my link below, use that discount, helps me, helps you. It's a fun day. This is essentially a Smart Grinder Pro inside of an espresso machine with not 40 different dials, but, but 25. Um, and so this is optimized for like medium to dark roasted coffees. What I've found is a correlation between those who drink really light early roasted coffee and those people who are really nerdy about their coffees. And so the likelihood is someone drinking lightly roasted coffee, like really lightly, and when I say light, I mean really light, uh, are likely not going for this machine anyway because they're probably the type of people that want even more control over the whole process. Uh, so this, I'm gonna assume mostly people drinking medium to darks are gonna go for this, and this grinder is more than sufficient for those means. I actually have pretty lightly roasted coffee in here now, and it's, and it's able to chew through it, but when you get to really lightly roasted coffees, there is a chance over time that you could strip the gears uh, from, from the torque needed to get through those. Uh, but I would not be worried about that for the absolute majority of you out there because, again, I just don't think people are gonna be drinking the, the level of lightness that you would need to, to do any damage to this. But the issue that I have found is whenever you are grinding, so let's go ahead and put this in. We're gonna start grinding. It's prompting us to tamp right here. I'm just gonna take this, push it down, and look, we're underdosed, all right? So it's prompting me to grind some more, all right? So I'm going to grind more, but I'm gonna explain what's about to happen. So I'm gonna grind more, and now it is teaching itself how much it needs to grind. So it, we do that, we push down again, and now we're on the happy face. All right, so we have the right amount in there. We already had kind of a concentration in the center like a mound, like Mount Crumpet, all right? And the Who's are around in the valley, you know, screaming for a little bit of the Christmas presents that the Grinch has taken up to the top. But we're saying no, we have not yet had our heart grown three times in size. And so little Cindy Lou Who can sit out there and cry because she's not getting her gifts this year. And we tamped it down and it said, oh, guess what? You don't have enough coffee in there. All right, so we go, okay, you know what? Fine, we're gonna put more coffee in there. So we already have a tamped bed and and then a little bit more coffee sprinkles out, again in a little mound. So we're just piling on gifts to the Grinch's Mount Crumpet. And he ain't gonna dump it anywhere because we still have not had our heart grown by three sizes. So because of that, we tamp again, guess what? Double middle concentration. So when our flow starts, we're gonna get an over exacerbation of the outside areas because that's where the lower density is, okay? So we have lower density on the outside, higher density on the inside. Now I will say for darker medium to darker roasted coffees, honestly, this isn't gonna be a big deal because those types of coffees extract so easily, so readily that you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have very minute changes from shot to shot. The issue comes in with lighter and lighter roasted coffees where channels can really completely change your shot. So regardless, it does work, obviously. We were able to get to the right depth in order to pull a shot. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna load this up and we'll pull it. Now I did wanna point out, it has that cutesy little barista spin at the bottom in order to polish the puck, but as you can see, it doesn't really polish the puck much at all, okay? And it's because it's not a tight enough fit. The, the tamper is not a tight enough fit to fully polish that top. Now, a polished top with a tighter tamper would be like this. So what, what it's emulating is sometimes you'll see breezes on bar, they'll tamp, and then they polish like this, and they pull it out. So that would be more of a polished puck. 
You see, any of those loose grounds have been pushed down, but the issue is because this is, you know, going up and down without having to line up, you're relying on the tolerances of the machine with the portafilter. So it's a little bit smaller just in case at some point you don't put it all the way in or something like that, but it still has full compression. But when it spins because it's not a tight enough fit, there are grounds that get shoved up against the wall. And then when you pull this out, they kind of knock loose and they kind of sit on top. Now, one of the big reasons for this whole contraption is to make your workspace a little cleaner than the, on the Express. Because on the Express, you had to grind, then pull out, then tamp, etc. And so you would get grounds on your tamper, you'd get grounds when you pulled it out. If you had it too full and you pulled it out, it could fall all over the tray. So one of the things about this is that it's supposed to help with mess. And it does, but it's not perfectly clean. Just a quick flush. Then I'm gonna go ahead and load this in, lock it tight all the way to the side to make sure we have that nice pressure. We pull our shot. So here we go. So just like with all the other Breville machines, there's a built-in pre-infusion, which I think is fantastic. That really helps negate a lot of the issues with any uh, pup prep. So there we go. We had the pre-infusion, now we're at full pressure and the shot is looking really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it now and all right, so you can stop the shot volumetrically, of course, uh, which uh, I think most people will likely do. This, it's hard to beat something for like 700, 800 bucks. That's absurd. You get your grinder, your express machine, and you have advanced features that you can grow into. With this one, it's set to nine bar, and, and, it, and it is, I have tested it with a pressure gauge, seems to not work. Now, of course, this could be just my unit, but the fact that even one unit is like that is not great. Uh, and so, although that doesn't matter for the majority of you, uh, because I, I, my belief is that most most of you will just stay with whatever stock pressure is. For those that will want to inevitably go on to do a dimmer modification to this in order to do some sort of flow control, it's nice to have accurate representation of pressure. Every single tick here should be a bar. So you have uh, zero bar, one bar, two bar, three bar, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have nine bar on this, essentially. Mine only goes up to, uh, well, actually, we'll just check it out. There's a spent puck in here, but it still should be able to get to full pressure. So we'll see where it goes. So that's as high as I've been able to get it, which is still in the espresso range, but it doesn't really give you much more uh, understanding than that. Maybe that is hitting nine bar and they just have a weird counting system because that's really the one, two, three, four. That's the fifth tick mark and it's not five bar. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's jump into the nerdy stuff. There are some of you who may have already bought this and have already transcended it while looking for another machine, but don't do that just yet. There's no reason to upgrade when you've already bought something that's absolutely capable of doing a lot more than what you originally thought. Also, if you're a beginner and you're like, is this something I can grow into? We're gonna go over that right now. So I've been doing a lot of temperature testing. So I've got this, it's called the TPD sensor from uh, Passato. Um, I'll go and link it below if you're interested in it. Um, there are some flaws with it. Uh, it. You have to use their porta filter in order to make it work. It does fit into all their different porta filters, but uh, you have the temperature probe right here. Unlike the SCASE device, which has kind of a silicone type uh, puck there to emulate a coffee puck, this has nothing. So the first reading is always a little skewed as it needs to fill up with water and it kind of, it, it needs to, you know, heat everything up. So we're starting the temperature test. I'm putting this in, it's obviously heating up because the environment is really hot. And here we go. We'll make sure the valve's nice and open so it only gets up to nine bar. So as you see, the temperature's rising rapidly. Pump is fully kicked on. Oh, I have that valve open too much. There we go. All right, so we're sitting at about nine bar. There we go. All right, so now that we've heated up the portafilter nice and hot, we're gonna do one more. And you'll see what happens with the temperature. So our starting temps are on 81 because the cavity inside that is full of, you know, pretty hot water. But this will give you an idea of how hot the water coming out can really get at. So as it keeps going, it slowly rises. It gets up to around 90 and kind of just sits there. Right, 89.9, look how stable that is, 90.2. And we're just sitting here, we're letting it run. 
All right, we're gonna do just one more. Last one. We're in the pre-infusion. We're about to hear the pump kick on fully. There we go, pumps on. We're at 91, 92. 91.6, 91.7, we're up over 92, 92.1, 92 flat, just under 92, just over 92, oh, it's climbing up to 92.6, 92.7, 93.2, up, oh, it dropped up to 94, almost to 95, up, oh, there we go. And as you see, I'm lowering the, the pressure. I'm increasing the flow rate, lowering the pressure. And as you can see, now the temperature up. Essentially what we're seeing here is it has really nice uh, thermal stability in the normal range of shots. So when you go from like zero to, to 25 seconds or so, you're getting a normal range of shots. And even the pre-infusion phase, it actually has pretty good temperature. It does increase as it hits nine bars, so it's doing a little lower pre-infusion. So if you're wanting your pre-infusion hotter, definitely run some shots through your portafilter in order to increase that temperature. As the puck is eroding, we did see a really odd behavior of the temperature kind of going up as it went down to six bar and then cascading back down the more the puck erodes or the more the pressure goes down. All right, so on this final test, um, I'm, I'm going to hold it in pre-infusion mode for quite a while in order to show you what happens with the temperature during that. I've dumped like pretty much all of the water outside of it. The portafilter is really hot though, so that's gonna actually help us emulate what would happen uh, in, in a normal circumstance once you've preheated your portafilter. But again, there will be some temp losses. There's no puck there anyway all right we're gonna do the pre-infusion first so here we are let's start it I'm gonna hold this down in perpetuity and it will allow me to continue pre-infusing for a while unlike the thermojet the thermocoil allows for unlimited well it there's still a, a, a cycle on the pump itself uh, but it does allow unlimited pre-infusion all right so we're pre-infusing pre-infusing the temperature is all the way up to 94 okay so it's at 95 under that pre-infusion. Now I've let it go all the way up to nine bar and we're at 95.6. Now the temperature's dropping. 94.7, 94.5, 94.4, 94.3. We're at just at nine bar. Now I'm gonna open the nozzle up to six. We're at 94.2 and then it starts to rise again at six. We're up to 95. Now I'm dropping it to three bar. Dropping it to three. We're at 96, but now it's it's going down. It's cascading quickly at 95 before the amount of water that it would release uh, uh, ejected. So that is what happens if you run them in succession without flushing. If we were to flush one time, it would actually help to lower the temperature. As you saw at the beginning, we started the shot and it, um, it, it uh, was at a high temperature and it started to decrease, meaning cooler water started to come out after the initial hot. So if we did that and now we put it back in with one flush and we start it, We'll see that we're, we start at 92 because there's hot water inside, but as you see, the temperature will increase a smidge. 928, 9, Now that it's reaching full pressure, oh, now that it's reaching full pressure, we're at 93.5, 93.4, and it goes back down to where that PID should be. So it is still in your best interest with this machine to flush prior if you're doing multiple shots in succession as the temperature wants to keep climbing shot after shot after shot. So if you're someone doing really light roast and you want heavy pre uh, heavy temperature, just go ahead, run some shots through here. Maybe put your blind in there uh, and kind of let the pressure release a little bit in order to kind of keep that water in there, getting it hotter and hotter, uh, and just kind of play around with those different steps. Now, best practice practices would say to flush maybe two shots worth through your portafilter to ensure you get that piping hot before you put your coffee in there. I actually prefer this, even though it has a little bit longer heat up time, to the thermo jets. Now the next thing I'm just going to briefly hit is the fact that you do have variable pre-infusion on this machine. You can hold this down and as long as you hold it down, it's going to be, it's not going to pull, pull the uh, pump into full pressure. So as long as you hold down your button, you're going to have manual pre-infusion. This is unlike the thermo jet machine machines, the Pro and the Bambinos, you only have a certain amount, about eight to nine seconds of pre-infusion where you can manually control it. This, you could do a 20, 30 second pre-infusion if you would like before it starts, which I think gives you an incredible uh, potential to dial in your espresso. If you are dialing in a new coffee and you think you went too fine, hold down pre-infusion until you see liquid show on the bottom of your bottomless portafilter if you have one, or if you see drops coming out of your spouts, then let go, let it go to nine, press, nine bar, and you're good to go. If you 
you're reliant on the pre-programmed shots, then you might have a choked shot and it's gonna end and you might have a terrible shot. You might be able to save it using this variable pre-infusion program, which I think is a really nice thing to have. One of the big hindrances on this that the previous model did not have is this smart technology where you can't distribute your puck. But there is a way around that. You can actually use one of these Breville made uh, collars or funnels. You need a bottomless for this, which I do have some that are, you know, on the Artpresso site, but there are others you can find on Amazon for cheap. You can simply put this in and this is going to act like it's the portafilter. So now the sensor is going to assume this is your basket. So it's going to overfill it if you rely on the sensor. So you can't really rely on that. But if you want to be able to distribute before tamping, this is what you can do. You can start your dose here. I'm going to put it to manual and you can actually, you can program your manual to hit exactly what you need. Of course, you need a scale in order to get that dialed in, but here we go. Oh, look, perfect. We're at the perfect, the perfect weight. Now, because we have a collar or a funnel, we can sit, we can WDT. But the thing is, is you don't need to use your own tamp. You can still use the tamp that's in the, in the machine. Just make sure once you're done WDTing, it's gonna be fluffed up to give it a nice tap. Pull this off, and if you look, now the grounds are perfectly distributed and it's flat. So we can put it right back into the machine and we can use the tamping system. Boom, perfection. Pull that out. You can also use these nice little Swark screens that are very thin in order to help keep your machine clean. And there we have it. Now I'm gonna hold this button down and just pre-infuse until that bottom is fully covered. So here we go. I didn't start the timer, but it is what it is. We're just going off feel anyway. All right. So we're pre infusing it's very low pre-infusion. We're at like one bar and there go some drops. At about three grams, I let go and I let it go to full pressure. So the grind is too coarse, obviously, but that's kind of the idea there. This is more of like a turbo, a blooming turbo style shot, but then we can stop it when we're at our desired weight. There we go. And we've got a really nice turbo shot. That shot was probably around 86, 87, which is a nice temperature actually for turbos. Uh, that way, because it's going through so quickly, it's not losing a lot of heat, as much heat inside the puck as it would with finer grounds. So you're gonna have a hotter shot at the end, um, but also it's a more even extraction. So lower temps tend to do pretty well, but and it's a solid shot. Once you have all the basics down and you want to move up, this machine can still can still handle you. You don't have temperature control like you might on like the Breville dual boiler or something similar, but you do have uh, an, a, an, a passable grinder that will work unless you, you know, start not enjoying your shots, in which case you might be at, at the lighter end of coffees. In that case, you can get a, se a separate standalone grinder. And there are covers you can buy that um, will cover up the hole up here where if you want to take the hopper off and put something else in it, uh, it can be like a tamper holder or something like that. But this machine, as long as it's running for you, you're gonna be able to grow with it. Um, people can do the dimmer mod on this, as I said earlier, which gives you complete flow control by controlling the voltage to the pump so that you can have control of your flow rate coming out. You don't have to rely on the pre-infusion only. Uh, but even with the pre-infusion, you have a lot of potential uh, in, in making whatever you're wanting. Just know that with Breville machines, you do have something that has a uh, ticking time on it, all right? So this is not going to last in the same way that maybe an Italian made like E61 style machine or other similar machines might last because of their um, ease of repairability, the timeless kind of uh, structure, the all metal parts, things like that. Um, these are repairable and uh, you know, soon with the right to repair in Europe, you'll have more access to a lot of the parts in here. Um, but I'm assuming people that are getting these are not really looking to do much repair. So just remember, keep your water uh, going strong. If you need repair, there all are a lot of videos online of people helping and I'm sure Breville support would help. I can't speak to that, um, but best bang for your buck out of the box beginners boom and, and I, I actually believe that now I also I do love the Bambino it doesn't have a grinder built in so people have to do that extra step and I think this kind of takes down that like wall of intimidation much better than a super automatic machine uh, in these especially in this price range the only super automatic I really enjoy is like a $50,000 one called the Eversys but this thing uh, when it comes to budget when it comes to quality when it comes to reliability when it comes to uh, grow ability it is in a league of its own from what I have tried Yep, it's really good. Anyway. I have one. Tell us your experience, Ugo, and I'm gonna drink this cappuccino because I don't ever drink milkies. 
I hate the grinder. I love the machine to buy. A little bit more colorful in his language than I, uh, but you get the idea. But it does the job if you're just beginning, so know that as well. From here in the studio to you at home, I hope that you brew something tasty today. And... Cheers.